And joining us now from Des Moines, Iowa, is CNN political analyst and senior political correspondent for the New York Times, Maggie Haberman. Maggie, thanks so much for joining us. I think it's fascinating that a lifelong New Yorker like yourself is currently in Des Moines, where you would think all politicians running for president would be. Another lifelong New Yorker was in Iowa last night, now back in New York because of this court case, and it underscores the politics and the courtroom continued convergence from a personal perspective. What does this case mean to Donald Trump? Yeah. It's deeply personal to Donald Trump. Uh, this and the second E. Jean Carroll trial that he's also said that he's planning on attending next week are, you know, cut to the core of him in different ways. But this one is about his business. It's about whether he continues to control his business in the way he has. It's about the amount of uh, damages that he will have to pay because it's a part of this is a foregone conclusion because the judge issued a, a partial summary judgment before the trial had even started saying that he and his company had committed widespread decades-long fraud. Uh, but this, this company is how he built this public image over a long period of time and so there are a few things that are that he cares about as much as his business and his money maggie last night during the cnn debate which trump was qualified for and invited to he didn't show up he did a fox town hall instead but we noticed i think a lot of people probably noticed how he moderated his tone on some key issues things like saying he'd be a dictator on day one or on abortion let's listen to some of that sound first on whether he would be a dictator. Can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable? Well, of course that's right. And of course, I'm the one that had very little of it. The new narrative they have, as you know, is I'm going to be a dictator. That's going to be the new narrative. No, no, I am not going to be a dictator. I'm going to manage like we did. I'm not going to have time for retribution. We're going to make this country so successful again. I'm not going to have time for retribution. And, and remember this. Our ultimate retribution is success. What did you hear last night? What Trump was that? This is a Trump who is, as you say, and my colleagues and I noticed this as well, starting to look at a general election and trying to grapple with his own comments and, frankly, his own past behavior that his aides are concerned about him highlighting at various points over the course of the last year. He, he said at a CPAC speech, this wasn't off the cuff, he said, uh, I, I will be, I, I am your retribution. Uh, to voters who feel that they have been wrong. But the reality is that, you know, Trump has a very long history of seeking payback. And so there is a reason that people have focused on that. Uh, those remarks are not helpful to him in a general election. And so you're seeing him trying to, you know, shift in terms of a general election electorate. Whether that will be successful is an open question. But I think last night was the beginning of mm. him trying to make a turn. I mean, my question, and you know this better than anybody, is it, can it be sustained? more than anything else, right? I feel like we've had so often, and you've covered every single one of them over the course of the last eight years, these moments where he starts to moderate the tone and we hear that advisors are trying to tell him, please moderate your tone on this, it matters, does it for like a day or five days and then swings totally back the other way. Is this time different? Look, he has a very long history, as you say, of bucking his advisors. Uh, you know, most of his aides do not want him saying poisoning the blood of the country about immigrants, and yet he continues to say it. Um, and he has doubled down on it repeatedly. Uh, so he definitely does what he wants, and we've been seeing more of that lately, including in him insisting on showing up in all of these cases this month, which not all of his advisors were on board with. Um, that having been said, when his back against, is against the wall, he can actually be much more disciplined than I think people realize. And he's certainly disciplined about delivering a repetitive message of victimhood and grievance. But I, I think that the bigger point is he has a history of, uh, you know, favoring retribution. He has a history of seeking payback. And so whether he modulates or not, uh, the history is his own behavior. And, and I think that's going to come up often, too. But does his ability now, as you say, to exhibit more discipline make him a more formidable competitor to President Biden in a, if it is that, head-to-head -head matchup, Maggie? I would, I guess what I would, I would put it, I would put it this way. I, I think that uh, everyone has seen that if you underestimate Trump, it's, it's probably unwise, right? It doesn't mean that he will win. doesn't mean that he does not have enormous general election liabilities, but that he has been able to uh, shape shift and, and appear to be different things to different people in ways that we have rarely seen a political figure on this la largest stage do. And so, you know, it, 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 will it be effective? I don't know, but it could be. You know, to that point, it, there's a difference now than perhaps in the past, same issue we had in 2020. His record 
right? He's actually done things uh, in politics. Right, correct. And I think that's where, you know, you heard him. Can we play actually the, the abortion sound uh, from last night real quick? For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Now, I happen to be, uh, for the exceptions, uh, like Ronald Reagan, with the life of the mother, uh, rape, incest. If you talk five or six weeks, a lot of women don't know if they're pregnant in five or six weeks. But I will say this, um, you have to win elections. Otherwise, you're going to be back where you were, and you can't let that ever happen again. You've got to win elections. Maggie, there's, there's been this kind of squishy, hard to pin down, where does he actually sit on this? It's the first line that the Biden campaign immediately clipped and sent out. And it's the first right. line that he'll be reminded of throughout the course of a general election if he right. gets there. Does that stick, or is he able to kind of finagle his way out of these things? There may be some voters with whom he is able to suggest because he will not be pinned down on a specific time frame for uh, when, when, when he believes abortion should be banned after during pregnancy uh, or whether he favors a national ban. There may be some voters who, who you know, revert to seeing him as, as more moderate on this issue. However, the fact that he repeatedly reminds people of the true fact that he is the person, other than Mitch McConnell, most responsible for ending Roe v. Wade, uh, that is not going to play well with a number of voters uh, who are animated by abortion. And as you know, the Biden campaign is going to remind them of it over and over and over again. And we saw last year in the midterms, and midterms are different, as you know, Phil, than general elections uh, for a presidential race. But in the midterms, it was a huge animating uh, force, and I've seen no sign that that energy is abating. Maggie Haberman, up early for us in Iowa. Thank you.